I'm not sure I fully understand the human fascination with finding things that are the furthest away from us. Hear me out. We should probably focus on the ocean that's right next to us, but nope. Today we'll be discussing the furthest star, captured by the, you guessed it, James Webb Telescope. Okay, I admit that does sound really cool, and it's actually mind-blowing how fast our knowledge of space is expanding these days. We have no idea what crazy news we're gonna get when we get up every morning. Luckily, that means the crazy content for you guys. Now, listen to this. The observatory has already found several candidate galaxies that challenge the Big Bang Theory, and our models of the galactic evolution. Webb Observatory has focused its instruments on Arendelle, the most distant secluded star in the known universe. The star's nickname comes from the Old English, which means morning star, because it is there during dawn, and the distance between Earth and Arendelle, measured in light years, is 12.9 billion. Might take a few minutes or so to get there. If the Big Bang Theory is correct, then this indicates this star existed not long after the Big Bang, when the universe was not only 900 million years old. Yeah, 900 million years. That doesn't make me have an existential crisis or anything. Okay now, the lonely star, known as Arendelle, might be a member of a very small population of stars that astronomers have been searching for for more than half a century. Yet, the question remains as to how researchers came across such a distant object in the cosmos. What do you guys think makes Arendelle stand out from the other distant stars we can view in the night sky? Lastly, and perhaps the most crucial question we need to ask, how do the latest findings earned by the JWST contradict our ideas on star evolution? This is all crazy, guys. Things are being challenged that we've always assumed to be correct. Next thing we know, you'll find the world is flat. Okay, I'm joking, but let's move on. Now, this new finding can change astronomy as we know it for good, but how do you ask? The light distance traveled between Arendelle is 12.9 billion light years, but the present proper distance, which considers the universe's expansion, is 28 billion light years. Stay with me. Now, because of this, when we look at the star, we see it's appeared 12.9 billion years ago. Given these findings, Arendelle must be around 8.2 billion years older than the Sun and the Earth combined. That in itself is insane. Arendelle is the first isolated star found in such a great distance. The smallest objects observed at these distances were star clusters implanted in distant galaxies. By utilizing the Hubble Space Telescope, an accidental discovery of this star was made. Hubble made the initial discovery of the star's parent galaxy after it was gravitationally magnified by a cluster located in the image's foreground. Massive astronomical objects such as galaxy clusters distort the space-time fabric surrounding them. Quick fun fact, did you guys know scientists say stars Arendelle is extremely hot blue in color? and is estimated to have a mass of 50 to 100 times greater than the mass of the sun? I don't know about you, but that scares me. Imagine that sunburn. Anyways, back onto the topic at hand. Because of gravitational lensing, the light coming from individual stars can be magnified by a factor of thousands. When it passes through foreground clusters, due to this distortion, the light coming from the foreground celestial bodies will bend as it gets close to the massive objects. The background galaxy that contained Arendelle appeared like an arc, which astronomers named the Sunrise Arc. But then hear this. The team saw a bright object sitting at the edges of the distorted galaxy. Sources in distant galaxies tend to be energetic events such as novas, supernovas, or tidal disruptions caused by black holes. These are transitory phenomena characterized by fluctuating brightness during their existence. However, Hubble studies showed that the brightness of this object stayed constant for nearly three and a half years. Hence, scientists determined that it is a gravitationally lensed bright star in a sunrise arc due to the restrictions of its wavelengths. Hubble could only provide a limited amount of information on this faraway star. Therefore, researchers decide to use the James Webb Space Telescope to investigate parents' features. Dr. Brian Welsh of Johns Hopkins University served as the study's principal investigator. In March of 2022, he and his team discovered the star by utilizing the data from the Hubble Space Telescope in their study. Webb's near-cam device collected new photographs of Arendelle, and the researchers evaluated those images. These photos cover a spectrum ranging from 0.8 to 5 microns in wavelength. Arendelle was analyzed in eight distinct Webb filters, and the exposure period for each filter was greater than half an hour. The new findings from the telescope have three important aspects that are really interesting. The first of these is the redshift of the star. The redshift of an object in deep space measures the distance between them. So basically, a dimensionless quantity known as Z is used to represent redshift. 
a value of z equal to zero represents the current time. And as the value of z increases, the look back time at the distance to that object also increases. Yeah, I know, I lost you a little there. Recent web-based measurements have verified the redshift of 6.2 previously estimated for Arendelle. Hubble Space Telescope measured released early in 2022 agree with this value, making Arendelle the highest redshift star yet. Next, we should also discuss Arendelle's bolometric luminosity, which is the star's total energy output across all light wavelengths. According to the data available online, there's no way that Arendelle is a low-mass star, brown dwarf star, or a free-floating exoplanet that was gravitationally lensed. Instead, the evidence suggests that this is a B-type star with a surface temperature of 13,000 to 16,000 degrees Celsius. Generally speaking, surface temperatures can classify stars into one of seven broad categories. O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. The time-honored mnemonic, Oh, be a fine girl, kiss me, is used for remembering the steps involved. An issue arises when we try to determine the overall luminance of Arendelle, which is somewhat between 600,000 and 1 million at times that of the sun. Accordingly, if Arendelle is a single evolved star, it has to be 40 times as massive as the sun. Five stars with 20 solar masses could emit the same amount of light, or two stars with the mass of 30. Taking into account a surface temperature of roughly 15,000, the researchers stress in their report that a single star solution is one of many that can clarify the spectral energy distribution maps. This is why the idea that Arendelle is a multiple star system must be considered. Massive stars that we observe in our neighborhood in the local universe typically have companions, and often have more than one companion, with the major companions lying within two astronomical units of the star. The tertiary partners may be as far away as 20 astronomical units, indicated that even if Arendelle has companion stars, they're too far away for the James Webb Telescope to be able to view them because of their high resolution. Which is another problem. I'm sure while we sleep, they'll find a solution for that too. But if the star is 1 million times more luminous than the sun, it will exceed the Humphreys-Davidson limit, also known as the HD limit. The HD limit refers to the empirical luminosity limit, which is the point beyond which no stars have been observed, at least in our part of the universe. Therefore, if Arendelle is found to be a single star with a brightness that is a million times greater than the sun, we'll need to rethink the HD limit and impose new limits on it. Since astronomers have spent decades searching for a population of three stars, Arendelle's discovery is noteworthy due to the possibility that it's the first to be found. The first nuclear synthesis resulted in the formation of hydrogen and helium, considered the two most fundamental chemical elements. Most candidates have been found in gravitational lens galaxies, since they are extremely uncommon and can only be found there. Most astronomers think Arendelle will maintain the same magnitude for a considerable time. In December 2022, researchers intend to conduct more observations of Arendelle utilizing the James Webb Space Telescope. Measurements of a star's brightness and surface temperature, both of which can be obtained from the parents, can be used to establish the type of star and the stage it has reached in its life cycle. Suppose the heavy elements in the new generations of stars do not generate in the stars that make up the Sunrise Arc galaxy. In that case, this proves that Arendelle is an exceedingly uncommon massive metal-poor star. Finding the very first stars to form in galaxies has long been considered the holy grail of astronomy. If we were to discover the earliest generation of stars, it would assist us in comprehending the process of star creation, and verifying the predictions of the Big Bang hypothesis. Also, looking for them is similar to looking for our own origins. As Richard Feynman once said, the most amazing discovery in all of astronomy is that the stars are made up of atoms of the same kind as those on Earth, which means that finding them is similar to finding our origins. What do you think about Arendelle? Kindly drop your opinions in the comments section.